Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Capital Mind Premium YouTube channel. This is Krishna Pala. This week we are going to discuss about one specific sector which is kind of creating interest among the investors as well as big conglomerates. You see, when Reliance and Adani have announced their entry into this particular segment, which is solar, uh, in a big way, Reliance is looking to set up 10 gigawatts and uh, Adani is going to increase their already present in solar PV, but they want to increase their capacity to 4 gigawatts, etc. So it clearly indicates there is some interest going on in this particular sector. So we'll discuss about uh, one recently listed entity called Wari, Wari Energies. Um, and let's see what are the prospects of the company as well as the entire sector. A general disclaimer, we do own Vare Energies in our Capital Mind Premium Focused Portfolio. So please do consider our views as biased and uh, don't consider this as any investment or investment advice. See, uh, until just three years ago, okay, uh, anything related to renewable, solar or green energy sounded more like a fad than anything else. Uh, and investors shouldn't be blamed for that because the scars were like that. You take any, for example, Suzlon, Inox Wind, REC, PFC, not the recent run-ups, okay? Uh, I was talking about last 5, 10 years, etc. and all. Uh, also, the investors have been left with scars and uh, huge waiting periods in this particular sector. However, things are looking uh, at least changed uh, in for good in the last few years, 2 to 3 years. Is it cyclical or is it change in perception or any true fundamental shift happening in this sector? Only time will tell. But now this is again an emerging sector, uh, the solar uh, solar and green energy. So uh, Vare Energies, which is recently listed, is India's largest solar PV manufacturing uh, company. And we will look into details. Uh, but for now, Let's see what is creating that interest. Okay, uh, it, to put it very simply, is this a fad which we had a, a, like seen in, two, uh, in the likes of 2008 or is it truly something changing on ground? Okay, see, India's total installed capacity is roughly around 426 gigawatts and the idea is that by 2028, we are planning to bump it up to 618 gigawatts. Okay. And the major chunk of it, around 170 gigawatts, is expected to come from clean and renewable energy like solar and wind. That's the opportunity. That's the opportunity we are talking about over the next five years, five to 10 years. And this comes on the back of government push as well. So, for example, there is a government is giving PLI production linked as incentives to boost and roughly it is in the uh, range of around 20,000 crores and uh, there is green hydrogen mission uh, with another allocation of 20,000 crores and there is Atman Nirbhar Bharat uh, with an allocation of 25,000 crores for solar manufacturing uh, units, companies, etc. and all. And they are plan India is also planning to set up solar cities uh, uh, with a estimated capacity of 40 gigawatts. So a couple of things are happening in this particular sector mainly from the backing of the government, which is acting as a tailwind. However, the companies should also be ready to capture this uh, tailwind. So uh, to put it very simply, the opportunity is there. And let's look at the companies that are ready to capture this. Uh, just to brief you on Wari, Wari is India's largest solar PV manufacturing, which we which uh, uh, we already discussed, with an installed capacity of roughly 12 gigawatts. Okay, and it captures uh, uh, 20 roughly 25 24 25 percentage of domestic manufacturing uh, of solar PV modules. Okay, and it is also largest exporter of solar PV modules in India, holding approximately 50 percent market share in exports. Okay, so it's uh, uh, as you can see, Wari is actually bigger than so, uh, Adani Adani Solar uh, in terms of uh, in terms of manufacturing capacity. Uh, remember, Adani is coming up with four gigawatts, which we uh, four additional gigawatts, which uh, uh, which they uh, uh, very recently announced in the last uh, two to three months. Also. 
Wari has very big expansion plans, capex plans. The, they are planning to uh, uh, take 3x capex, 3x their uh, capacity increase in the next five years. Okay. See, um, very recently they raised 2,500 crores from IPO. Okay. And they are setting up a 9,000 crore uh, uh, mega project to, uh, to set up solar cells and modules uh, uh, in Orissa. Okay. Now the idea is that uh, this particular, that project is going to cost 9,000 crores of which 2,500 crores is already funded by the IPO money and the remaining 6,500 crores will be a combination of debt and internal accruals. Okay. And uh, uh, they are planning to start commence the operations of this by early 2025. So uh, we can expect that to be in the next uh, uh, six to eight months from now. Additionally, they are also exploring another three gigawatts of solar, solar cell manufacturing in US. Okay. Now, if everything goes well, this particular uh, capacity plans, uh, which is the current uh, uh, 5.4 GB uh, uh, solar cell and additional 6 GB, uh, not GB, G, uh, GW gigawatts and uh, uh, US plant expansion, etc. They're planning to take the uh, capacity from current 12 gigawatts to 38 gigawatts in next five years. That's a huge plan. And uh, uh, given the past history of Wari, it is, they are in very well, uh, uh, they are well averse to, they are well positioned to achieve this scale. Um, also, since we are talking about scale, uh, one thing Wari is known for is its execution capabilities. Uh, just to give you an example, Wari increased capacity in the last 15 years by 40 x 40 times and in just four years by six times. Okay. And revenue grew by almost 6x in four years and uh, profits grew by almost 27x in four years. And uh, as of as of uh, November 2024, um, uh, which we are uh, uh, which we are standing at, is they are they are at net debt free balance sheet. Okay, um, so they don't have the net debt. They are net debt free. They have some debt, but they also have some cash. The return ratios are stupendous at 42 percent and uh, uh, 40 percent ROE R and ROE and ROC. And they have achieved the entire scale with minimum leverage and net debt debt free status. So that's commendable. We have to understand that. Um, so just to compare on the peer comparison, OK. Uh, uh, so another listed player in the in the, which is recently listed is premium premier energies, which is the closest competitor of our energies. OK, so but if you if you look at the size comparison wari is 4x the size of premier in terms of installed capacities and revenues also wari has higher realizations uh, when compared to premier however the margin profile is more or less the same as we discussed wari uh, has scaled up without much of debt however premier has to uh, take debt and then do uh, uh, the capex and all which is why the uh, waris uh, debt to equity currently stands at 1.5 times uh, what is interest coverage ratio which is the higher the best is currently at 9.3 when compared to premier is at 3.1 so even with bigger base and bigger scale, Wari has managed to grow faster in terms of revenue and pat over the last three to four years, as you can see in the table. See, uh, having said that, not everything is rosy for the sector, okay? Um, uh, Solar Renewables has is facing its own headwinds. Let's discuss about that. One important major headwind is uh, the solar panels are getting cheaper, resulting in resulting in lower price realization. So, uh, just to give put the numbers in perspective, solar modules prices have significantly dropped by seventy three percent from one point seven eight dollars to right now at uh, fifteen cents, um, indicating that uh, uh, maximum power basically uh, the realizations are coming down. The, so, in other words. Uh, uh, for you to grow the revenues on the back of uh, falling realizations is only by increasing volumes. So you have to 
uh, increase the volumes multifold for you uh, to get the revenue growth so um, however please understand it is kind of a dual -edged, double edged sword uh, at the falling module prices because they can lead to tighter profit margins and economic pressures however on a broader perspective it leads to more affordable modules and expand the solar market and expand the reach expand the adaptability of the solar pv modules and potentially benefit the entire industry uh, uh, basically uh, making renewable energy more accessible to the uh, to the masses that's one thing second biggest risk is regulatory risk which is the dependency of uh, government okay see the reduction in custom duties and falling module prices uh, is the major risk for solar uh, solar manufacturing industry because uh, right now what is happening is that there is some restrictions uh, on import imports coming from china however that imports are likely to be in place till march 2026 so we have additional one and a half year to deal with that scenario and what will happen after that after the uh, uh, incentives have been removed we have to see uh, however please understand that it is something similar to what uh, the electric vehicle market is going through okay initially the uh, adaptability is driven by high subsidies by the government the government has to incentivize the sector for the adaptability and now once the demand picks up and once the economies of scale scale is achieved the government will kind of remove that incentives and the industry will, will be on its own to kind of uh, self-sustain without relying much on the government and that is exactly expected to happen in solar as well so uh, we'll see how it goes after one and a half year but for now that policy cushion is definitely there and it is helping the sector um, uh, another major risk is trump trump has uh, 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 trump is about to take uh, the charge from mid of january and we all know that trump going uh, trump is a relatively against renewable sector and um, uh, while it is anyone guess what what will be the quantum of that impact however see uh, with elon musk working closely with trump we have to uh, we have to see that uh, uh, things will go it may not be as smooth as expected but it will not stop as well so that is one thing because one, one major risk is that uh, bari exports 50 percentage of its revenues to us uh, export revenues to us so that is a major risk for uh, bari as well um, so let's look at the valuations. War is currently trading at 78,000 crore market cap and based on full year basis, it is roughly at around 45 times and six times uh, price to sales. Um, also, the company has a listed subsidiary, which is Wari Renewable Technologies, which uh, uh, which the parent company, Wari Energies, owns 75 percentage. And uh, this has a market cap of 15,000 crores. Uh, uh, huh, one more important point, Wari uh, has another uh, uh, listed company which is Wari Technologies. However, it is not owned by Wari Energies, but it is owned by the promoters. So there are three entities, three listed entities: Wari Energies, Wari Technologies, uh, Wari Energies, and Wari Renewables, which is its subsidiary, and completely a sister concern, Wari Technologies, which is not a part of Wari Energies but part of uh, the uh, promoters. So please understand that. Purely on the valuation perspective, it is definitely stretched and uh, uh, there's definitely uh, no room for error in this in this particular uh, counter right now. However, if the if the company can able to deliver or continue the growth and given the market leadership and uh, uh, planned capex, so we have some visibility and order book, etc. Uh, uh, for the next three to five years and margin profile is also good. Uh, I think it we uh, uh, even from now onwards the company may be a decent compounder if may not be a uh, a big wealth uh, or big multi-bagger it can be a decent uh, uh, multi-bagger for the, uh, a decent compounder for the next uh, three to five years is our view so in to, to put everything in perspective what we like see sectoral tailwinds we know that the renewable energy both solar and wind has a huge government push incentives and private capex is also coming in terms of reliance and adani and uh, wari energy has achieved scale so uh, in the last 15 years 
they know how to set up capacities, scale it and sell it. So it's a proven track record for from the promoters and uh, their market leader right now. We'll see how uh, Reliance, once Reliance comes into picture, we'll see how things goes. But for now, Vare is the market leader. 3x capacity expansion and uh, 1.5x order book visibility for the next three to five years. Prudent capital allocation, decent balance sheet, decent return ratios, everything is in place. What, how, what we don't like? falling module prices, which we discussed. Um, uh, and more importantly, the long-term phenomenon is expected to stay because volumes volumes has to increase and realizations will fall. This trend will continue for the next five years. That is uh, 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 that we have to consider as main risk and we have to evaluate accordingly. And uh, valuations, definitely it's uh, uh, stretched at 45 times. Uh, uh, if anything goes wrong, there is very little room for error at this current juncture. So with that in place, uh, uh, so that's it from our end. Uh, again, a general disclaimer, we do own Vare Energies in our portfolio, in our uh, capital mine premium portfolios. So please do consider it as a biased view and uh, don't consider uh, uh, this as an investment advice from capital mind uh, team as such. So uh, that's it from my side, guys. Thank you. And do let us know what do you think and uh, what do you think of the company? What do you think of the sector and what uh, next sector or company you would like us to pick up for next week? Till then, take care. Bye.